Stephen, how long have you been with Harmony? Uh, when, when did you start uh, Harmony Protocol? It was uh, five years ago, really putting the team together and starting this project. And what do you think the greatest challenges so far have been? We really want to think about the utilization of the whole platform. Thinking about now that we build a great platform, there are many tools, and the ecosystem is really thriving with both Ethereum community and what's not. But who are the users? Uh, who will really build the next tools and application for the users? I'm still trying to figure out a lot about the users in the mm -hmm. Harmony community. And I'm on a lot of forums trying to read around and trying to figure out who they are and what their wants and needs are. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say your the which forum you stay you use the most mm -hmm. um, in order to uh, uh, work with the community? Yeah, I think that's really the key question that myself and many of my uh, collaborators have been trying to figure out. So as you may know, we are really thinking about many of the use cases beyond the initial DeFi, NFT, if not even governance, without to be extending into AI. I think this is a great topic to develop what will be possible with the AI, with the blockchain technology. Now, there are so many ideas and so many discussion that I would say not just on Discord or Twitter, so we are exploring what kind of forum tool. And so far, we've been researching into this course, many of the projects still using it. If not, Reddit has been a great, great like general platform for many years already. But many of the community are really having backlash about different policy and how openness of the discussion. That's really dear to the topic today. Before I got into the workforce, I was a student. And uh, my downtime, I would play a lot of video games. Very cool. Um, so I spent a lot of time on there um, going back and playing video games from my childhood and mm -hmm. new, new games um, that are on the internet today. Um, what would you say your favorite uh, video game was? Oh, wow. It has been a long while. I remember nonstop on Game Boy in particular. For sure, Super Mario, but my favorite is actually Bubble. Uh, I really spent too much time on such a simple, but I wouldn't say addictive, it's just a really engaging game, I still remember. I would be studying um, like in school and all day doing homework, but then at night I would be like, uh, like sneakily like play that game uh, all the time. And I still remember the last game I played would be um, Warcraft 2. I was completely destroyed by my uh, good friend, best friend. Um, to be like playing a game I never played before and up to the level and he'll be like really attacking me out of uh, nowhere. Uh, it's really just very um, part of the childhood to be understanding how computer works, technology works, but actually almost uh, the social networking communities around gamers. I loved to play uh, Wolfenstein 3D when I was a kid. It was like one of my favorite games and um, it was actually the first game that I made levels for. Mm. Uh, so I had like a map editor wow. and I would create levels for it and cool. um, redo the artwork. And I actually had my own versions of, of the game. Uh, these days you could find a lot of uh, similar games where people create their own mods on a, for sure. I get a mod, um, there was a forum called uh, ModDB. Okay. And so I get on ModDB and I can see um, all the new games people have been working on that are mods for, for old games. And there's a, there's a forum and a huge following and a lot of uh, these great titles. Um, one problem though is uh, <laughs> you know a lot of these forums um, they're very uh, closed off to a lot of communities right you can, they're not really available to, to just anyone they're not open access exactly. so I think that there's there's a great need to have you know we need new forums that are fully open and one way to create a forum that's completely open is to leverage cryptocurrency um, because as we know um, crypto is really the only effective way to have a fully open network as the tokens kind of guide the uh, the access right so this allows us to be able to you know onboard users with uh, without anyone at the helm to um, vet who's coming in and out it's all driven economically mm -hmm. um, where do you see Harmony um, mm -hmm. in, in this scenario? Where, where does Harmony fit and how can we improve the um, experience mm -hmm. on uh, these forums? Exactly. This is exactly the question we want to open up and ask many of our collaborators, if not partners. We do know that the blockchain technology works both for the open access and permissionless way of uh, participating. We understand the incentives also work. Instead of thinking about Reddit, Karma, NFT to talk about the engagement for any of the small community. But most of all, it would really, really be the true open platform for everyone, for any topic. And forever. Um, 
Oh, the great thing is many people already started on the whole decentralized social already. So we understand many of our friends, including my uh, co-founder, coming to understand karma points, the karma labs to be understanding reputation and identity. What you said about the game community is also something that you spend so much time, you care so much, you're building part of it. These are all organic content and traffic. It's something that we care a lot about too. So we are doing two parts, right? What are the tools and what are the, um, uh, even the Soban NFT concept to take the primitives to the next level, right? Let's really track everything on, on chain. Let's make sure that all the uh, social content that people can have in a decentralized way building the social media is possible, social graph. But the, also the extreme as well. What are the use cases now? And what are the strong community now that are just emerging? I'm really talking about AI here now. There's no doubt that uh, all this Bitcoin, Ethereum traders forum in particular are going crazy. But AI forum, I just blog about it, starting my new blog post just on that topic because uh, I really see that as the emerging use cases, hopefully with blockchain, both the currency part, but also the technology, to make sure this forum, this discussion, this use case will be thriving for these communities. That's excellent. I'm really excited to see what gets, what gets made. Yeah. yeah. Um, back to the game that you play, Wolfenstein. So um, I'm seeing a lot of tools now come mm -hmm. from uh, AI tools that mm -hmm. are being used for level design. Mm -hmm. um, so we've seen, you know, a certain instances where someone will draw what a level looks like, mm -hmm. and the AI comes in there, and they, based off of what the parameters are, they just create a beautiful, flourishing world with very little work. Mm -hmm. And the same technology could be used for like a map editor, so exactly. uh, like Wolfenstein, right? So I can just basically generate and generate and generate the type of uh, maps I like for this game. And we're starting to see so many games appear like this, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's great for just improving overall efficiency with whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a game, or you're generating art, or mm -hmm. whatever you're working on, it's just that basically we can leverage AI as an extension mm -hmm. of ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, Adam, I think your discussion this week really inspired me to think about games and AI all over again. What you said about like your like almost obsession, but also expertise in games and game development, like character design and level design, really is very broadly of many of the communities, right? They care about, I don't know, whether sustainability or future transportation or like even humanity of life extension. They actually put the content together. And there's a lot of AI that can help, right? Whether for sure many of the graphics and character design, and as you know, even AI can do the entire game mechanics, if not game generation in one go. Uh, as a technologist, as people like, uh, as I would say, even as Harmony as a project, and myself as a as a researcher or engineer, I, I really think that uh, AI give it a different lens about how different community and users want the products to be, make product people want. At the end of the day, you want this product, whether AI or blockchain, that will allow you for this community to do things together. I think you also inspire me to think again. Um, not just to think about like um, what we want to impose on people or whether tokens or smart contract, but how they would want the forum to have all this discussion. So uh, because of you, I also started another blog post that probably will take a few more weeks to think about how to present it, about even just game design in general, what tools on that side, because I am not a gamer nor a developer there for myself, but uh, that would be a great topic to come back to. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One last thing. So a little bit more about myself. Uh, mm -hmm. So I work from home entirely now out okay. in Colorado. Yeah. Um, so I barely go anywhere. So that allows me to do more things like mm -hmm. uh, farm at home and I, li I raise mm -hmm. livestock. But I don't have a lot of space, right? Mm -hmm. So I've taken on some new interests into vertical farming. Mm. Vertical farming is really cool um, where we can do so much with very little room, but I'm afraid of Right. <laughs> really? So uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a need for me to have something else get involved to help me along with the process, mm -hmm. right? So I don't want to climb. So that okay. involves automation. Right. Um, so this got me thinking, how can we leverage AI mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to automate and improve our, um, our vertical farming and make okay. it safer and more effective and efficient? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually don't have answers, but actually super interested to learn more. If, as a matter of fact, probably my dad will want to learn the most. Like himself has been a farmer for like decades and myself have been very exposed to it in childhood. And I really care about that topic of not just sustainability, what you're doing of like what humans and community can really help on their own, but also specifically farming, construction of farms and more the automation all the way to robotics 
and the software part of building um, your own sustainable in your backyard. I think uh, to me is uh, something that uh, many of you, you know, the big companies, uh, some of our friends at Google, uh, like a uh, nonprofit called Sustainability Project with AI, is something that's uh, very dear to many people's heart of being able to like ask the robots to be for sure monitoring like 24 seven, which human cannot do, right? Which I grew up doing, right? Really, there's no weekends for farmers. There's no like, oh, this is too, dirty or too dangerous for uh, any of us uh, when we're doing animal farming. And for you probably it's the heights or like being able to do it in all weather. I do think that both robots and AI can help a lot there. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for answering my question, Stephen. Um, yeah, thank you, Adam, yeah, for the great chat here. Um, reach back. If you got any more information on the you know, vertical farming stuff? Or, <laughs> love we should all like give Adam some uh, ideas, if not try it out together. Absolutely, yeah. Just uh, send me any information you have, and uh, I would love to talk with your father about it someday, too. Yeah, such fun. Thank you.